What's up everybody? Got another knife here for you. And this one, um, pretty interesting. I've been interested in this knife for a long time, uh, this design and uh, this model, and finally pulled the trigger on getting this one. So I thought I'd show it to you in how it came. Uh, this is a Gavco EDC mini flipper, uh, frame lock design and uh, made by Michael Gavick. I bought it through his uh, store that he's uh, that he works through, Gear Bastion. I'll put a link to that in the description below. But really pretty cool stuff. Ordered this knife, got it right away. I think it was two days or less. He got it right out. It was pretty amazing how fast it was shipped. And I got this one particular for a couple reasons. And I'll get into those in a minute. But first, just want to show you what was what came with it. So it was sent in this nice little pouch. You know, good padding and everything. And then that pouch was in a baggie that had this nice little piece of paracord with these beads on it. Or actually in it. I put the beads on it in this little loop so they didn't go flying all over the place. But that's nice. Came with a little compass. Cool stuff. And two decals. That's his maker's marker emblem symbol. And then his card. So in case you do need to get in touch with him, which I'm sure anyone watching this video knows who he is already, but thought I'd put it here. That's his card. His email. His website, and that's that. Get all that out of the way. So I kind of don't like doing white backgrounds. Uh, one, sometimes the camera has trouble focusing on it. And two, I like to have some kind of contrast. Um, the white is kind of tough on the eyes too a little bit. And there's a lot more shadows made in this. But I really wanted you guys to get the color of this knife. I'm trying not to touch it too much because I don't want to get my oils all over it. I just wiped it down with some Windex to bring the colors out because I have been playing with it a lot since I got it. I got this uh, a week or two back. But it's a really nice purple on here. I think when Mike did his video on this, he was calling it more of a deep blue or blue color in the, the videos that he did on it. And you can see how the light, I, I know guys, it's bad with the, sh with the shadows with the white background. But it's the only way that I could really get the purple to come out. Uh, if I used anything else, the black or something else, you wouldn't see it that well. But yeah, but Mike was calling it blue, but really it's a purple. And when he had put pictures of this on Instagram, it looked very purple. And that's what drew me to it. I definitely like the purple color. Um, I have some other knives that are coming that will have blue on them. Uh, I have one blue G10 knife already. So this purple color was pretty hot. So that's one reason I, want, I wanted to pick this particular knife up. So hopefully you guys are getting a nice look at that. And there's the blade for you. I'm going to set this down. It's pretty much easiest for you guys to see it right here. Um, without moving around too much because it seems to get really dark or light. Maybe once the video is done it will look better. So, give you a little background on this, which you guys probably already know. Mike Gavick uh, of Gavco Knives uh, has been doing knives for a long time, but he really just recently got into the flippers or the really the folding knives. His first was this knife was based on his fixed blade model, the EDC, and he did first just a frame lock folder, so there wasn't any flipper tang on it, uh, but the proportions are almost identical to his EDC fixed blade. And he did that as a frame lock. He, I think, gave the first 10 out or sold the first 10 to his close friends or people that have been with him a long time. And then he started making a few more, and then he got into the flippers. And now there's two models in this. There's the small flipper, which this one is, and then there's the large flipper. There's also a friction folder version, too. But I particularly wanted the small flipper because it matches his fixed blade EDC the most. And I really have loved his design on that. The handles he's done have been great and everything, but obviously I'm more of a folding knife, flipper knife guy, so obviously I had to go for this. And 
I was kind of waiting for the right one that I wanted to pick up because he didn't, you can't really order direct through him. He makes them, puts them on Gear Bastion, or sometimes we'll do maybe like an Instagram sale here or there. Uh, but you have to get him through the knife selling site Gear Bastion, uh, which his, his virtual shop is on there. So you kind of have to be quick and get them when they pop up, um, which I think is a pretty good way for him to do it. You know, you get, to, what happens is, yes, you can order a knife custom through some makers and get everything you want on it, but maybe that's not really what the maker likes the best. You know, you can have, I want you to put this on and that and do that, and he'll make it for you, but maybe there's not that same passion as the knife maker making something that, you know, he created himself, everything out. And this is, you can see that Mike really put a lot of passion into this knife. When you pick up and feel this knife, you feel it's a handmade custom. Uh, you know, all the contouring, all the grooves, uh, you know, this is what I believe he calls his rock pattern design. Um, but you can see the intricate work there and everything is soft. You know, it's all soft, smooth to the touch, um, right around the edges there, you can see. And he did a lot of detail stuff. So he anodized, obviously, the frame purple, but he left where he milled out the holes a silvery color so there is a contrast there so you guys can make that out and then how he kind of polished the ridges so it gives that contrast between the purple and the you know the silver uh, gray of the titanium and then there's the blade which I believe this one is flat ground he usually does two types of grinds either a convex or a flat I w believe this is a flat you know, I know there's guys that could look at it and tell me exactly what it is. I have trouble telling the difference between a flat and a convex, but I believe this is a flat grind. And what he's really known for is his edges, just how ridiculously sharp they are. You know, his motto is don't cut yourself. And, you know, he makes his knives super sharp, so you have to be very careful about them. He also gets them ridiculously thin, too. I mean, you can see how how thin that edge is. We can get it right like that. Yeah, I mean, that's... That's really tight right there. And the bevel on here is just a really micro bevel. I mean, you can see how tiny that is. Um, getting close to a zero grind. And I know a lot of people talk about zero grinds and everything. It obviously is a second bevel, but it is a tiny, tight bevel on there. And you really want to see the macro shots on here. So getting back to some of the reasons why I wanted to pick this up obviously I've, I've liked the small flipper model I've liked his design work um, his reputation as far as sharp knives but in particular there's a few things one this was the first knife he's done with this mother of pearl inlay which you probably have seen uh, you know in this video I mean uh, already and I just wanted to point out so these were mother of pearl discs that he inlaid into the titanium he's never put that on one of his knives before that I know of uh, second, this is the AEBL steel, and I don't have a knife with that steel yet, and uh, Mike's been working with that for a long time, so I felt very confident in getting a blade with that steel since he seems very comfortable in using it. And the other thing, or the third part, is that this was one of the first small flipper EDCs he's done that has a two-tone finish on it. I believe he's done two-tone finishes on some of his fixed blades and maybe a couple of the frame lock just folders, but I believe this was the first flipper that he's done that's had a two-tone. So you have this really great tight stone wash on there. I mean, you can see it's almost like a matte finish, but it actually is stone washed. And then this great satin finish, and you can see how perfect the symmetry is that this flat lines up with that flat when you look at it so really great work uh, very nice intricate specific detailed handmade custom details done to this knife uh, the other thing I love about it is the pocket clip I love custom pocket clips Obviously, this looks great, matches the blade perfectly. And he did this cool little esque, mayo esque type hole pattern uh, in it, too. And this knife is just ridiculously lightweight. I mean, super light in the hand. I don't know what the weight is on this. It's maybe around three ounces. Um, it's just ridiculously light. The flipping action on it has just continued to improve. It's a little tight when I first got it. And you have to kind of figure out just the right way to flip it. 
It's not not really, well, you can do a push down on it now, but when I first got it, you couldn't. And it's not really just a pull back, it's kind of a hybrid. So you get both, you kind of push down and slide back on it, and it'll come out nice. The thing you have to get used to is obviously this is a smaller knife and I have larger hands. So a lot of times I'd be pushing on the lock bar a little too much. So you want to make sure you're off the lock bar and it'll come out. It is smooth. You can see how it glides. And check out this detent on here, guys. Let's see if we can get it just right. Look at that. Sucks it right in. I'll just pop it out just so you can see that again. I mean, you hear that? Let me put that right next to the uh, right next to the camera. It's great. So it is a nice flipping action. You just have to get used to the, the size of the knife. Uh, it actually is a decent sized blade on here. This is a 3.4 inch blade, I want to say. Uh, and I believe the overall length is 7.6 inches. So it didn't seem like it was going to have that big a handle in it. But you can see it does fill up the hand. And part of it is because of this choil here. Your finger does get right up in there. Fits in nice. Now there's no jimping on here, uh, as far as on the blade or on the frames. And that doesn't bother me too much in a knife this small, uh, in that it fits nicely in the hand. And because of the angle, you're pretty much in a good hold with it. Uh, also, if you're going to be doing a lot of intricate cutting, um, the spine is rounded very nicely, so your finger's not going to have a lot of any edges to really get hurt on. Maybe um, one thing would be put maybe, maybe just a little bit tiny jumping right here just to get some little bit of traction because the knife is super, super smooth all the way around. So it can get a little bit slippery. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's just an excellent build, excellent quality. You can see how smooth that is. The centering on it is dead on, it looks like to me. I mean, maybe a micro hair off I don't know but it looks it looks pretty centered to me when you look down the knife and you can see how it flies out nicely you know just a smooth action through so it's not like a it's not like a shotgun shot out it's not um, you know and it just pops out but you can feel it just swing nice and evenly through and just opens nice uh, reverse grip on this you know you it, because of the handle and because it actually is a little bigger in the hand the handle uh, than you think it's going to be. It actually does have a decent reverse grip. Your pinky falls right in here, right about the you know the fatty part of your knuckle there. The rest wrap around, and you can see you have a little bit there. So you just lock your thumb on there, and you have a reverse grip on it. Now, once again, this is a very thin blade, so you do want to be aware of that. And let's just get into some size comparisons and then some cutting tests too. So. Probably the easiest thing to compare it to size-wise is my 801, because this is a three and a half inch blade too. And you can see when you do it pivot to pivot, the blades match up right around the same way. I'll show you this way. I just like showing them both. And then, but if you go butt to butt, the ZT is a little bit longer. I'll show that here too. Yeah. But then here's the thickness on it, just so you can see that. You know, ZT obviously thicker titanium slabs and thicker on the blade stock. So, but as far as sharpness goes, it kind of lines up or is as sharp or sharper than pretty much my other sharpest knives I have. And those would be these. My Browse Division, very thin, tight hollow grind on this one. My Microtech, probably as far as production knives go, the sharpest production knife out of the box that I've ever had. And probably ties with this one, which is the, uh, I mean, the Spyderco ties with the Microtech as far as grind. But this, once again, is a, very, is a thinner blade, uh, and this is a flat grind all the way through. So those are what I would put in the category of sharpness. And obviously, these are production. This is a mid-tech. This is a custom. Uh, so 
let's just show you some of the cutting with this knife just so you can see. Got our copy paper here. I'll flare this out a little bit. Push cut. No problem. Do a little slicing. You know, this is why I just love flat grinds. Uh, this just so smooth through it. You know, no hot spots on the knife as far as holding it, and then no uh, bad areas on the blade edge. You know, just any part of the knife cuts. So even if you start at the edge here, start in the belly, start in the back, just great stuff. Wipe that off a little bit. And then we'll get to the difficult test. All right. So now, I think you guys have all seen, if you watched any of my other videos, that when I really want to test the knife out on sharpness, sorry about the crunching sound, I use uh, the catalog paper. So I think that's the toughest stuff to cut and really the most difficult for a knife to catch on so that it can cut through it. And so we got some catalog paper here. We'll see how this does with it. Let's go with this piece here. And we're even going to go against the grain. Why not put it against at the hardest part? You see that? You see, I mean, if you've watched any other videos, now once again, it might be, you know, the, the, it's a lighter knife, I get that, and it's a flat grind and thin blade, but even when you've seen my other sharpest knives, that just caught it right away and went right through it. Look at that. That's probably the best performing cut on the catalog paper that I've had of all the knives I've done against. Now I haven't put all the knives against the catalog paper because some I just didn't even want to get to it or show it on or someone showed it was sharp or not so I, I did copy paper but this this is a on the against the grain catalog thin paper slid through each time. I think that is a testament to how great an edge Mike puts on his blades and just an excellent lightweight EDC the name of the you know the name of the model but EDCable blade they can get in the pocket. Now I have put this in my pocket. The edge, uh, the clip retention is good on it. Uh, it sits, you know, a nice, it's not deep carry, but there's not a ton of the blade sticking out, but you do need a little bit, especially on a knife this size, so you can grab onto it. So when it's in the pocket, even though this goes to here, it's usually a little bit higher. So I'd say maybe that much is sticking out when it's in the pocket. So when you, you know, if it's in your pocket like this, you have, you put your thumb down and you have this to pull out on and it's a nice little, you can see the, the rounded area, how it kind of expands a little bit. So it's a good spot to get your hand in. And you can see too, he's done a great job in how the blade fits in here, taking up the full space of the handles, you know, so it's a, almost very proportional knife as far as blade to handle but you know rub your hands here your finger doesn't doesn't say anything so when you put your hand in there's no chance of hitting the blade so hope you guys liked the video uh, hope that gave you a good look on everything about the knife uh, one other thing too is the standoffs he actually had um, colored those I don't know if that's heat colored or electro anodized color but they're a nice bronze there and then the, um, you know, the standoff pivot here, if we can get that to focus, is just the silver color. Come on. There you go. Let's just see that. So the rounded spine. And once again, you can see flips fine. You just have to get that little snap action. And you do have to flip it a little bit to break it in. But, 
I have no problems with it. I would definitely recommend picking up one of these, either the small or the large. The large, I believe, is 3.9 inch blade. So this is a 3.4, just so you can have a different idea as far as size. And this is overall 7.6 inches. And I think the large one is like 8.5. I'm not exactly sure. Mainly, he doesn't like list. He only lists the, you know, the specs are only there when the knife's available for sale so you can see it but once it's sold it comes off the site so uh, I don't think there's any spot on his shop that just lists the exact specs of each of his knives but definitely check out his uh, shop his website and uh, yeah this knife is excellent very happy with it so everybody have a good night a good afternoon good day and hopefully in the next few weeks I'll get some more knives in to show you some more fun stuff thanks a lot